Here are some notes on cerebral blood flow to the gray versus white matter in the brain. The gray matter contains neuron cell bodies, dendrites, and synaptic terminals, and it requires higher metabolic activity due to its role in processing information. It receives significantly higher blood flow per gram of tissue. So at 80 cc's per 100 grams per minute, that's significantly higher than the white matter. It's located primarily in the outer cortex of the brain. You can see it on the outsides here. Uh, it's also in the deep nuclei of the brain. You can see it on the inside here as well. The white matter, on the other hand, consists mainly of myelinated axons that connect different regions of gray matter. It has a lower metabolic demand compared to gray matter, and it receives lower blood flow at 20 cc's per 100 grams of tissue per minute. It appears white due to myelin content, and it functions primarily as the brain's communications network. Some notes on cerebral blood flow in general. The total brain cerebral blood flow averages at the average between these two numbers, 20 and 80, 50 cc's per 100 grams of tissue per minute in healthy adults. The total volumetric flow is 750 cc's per minute. This makes sense if you use this formula for a 75 kilo person. Blood flow varies significantly by region of the brain, and the range is from 100 to 300 cc's per 100 grams of brain tissue per minute, so much broader range than what we saw just between white and gray's average. The flow is tightly coupled to metabolic demand of different regions, and the gray matter receives four times more blood flow than the white matter due to higher metabolic needs, as we discussed up here. This differential flow reflects the higher energy requirements of the gray matter, while uh, most active neural processing occurs compared to the white matter.